Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About It Over Cocktails with Carly. I am your host, Miss Carly Baby. Tonight we have the the guru. You don't want to miss this. So welcome to the show. Thank you for having <laughs> thank me. You. It's very exciting. You look so pretty. Oh my gosh, thank you. What's your secret? Sleep. I know that's right. Yes, rest. Beauty yes, rest. lots of water, I'm sure. Yeah, love water. Uh, okay, yeah. so I was telling her before we started recording that I absolutely love her nose ring. Oh. And that I want to get my nose pierced. So one day I'm going to get it pierced and I'm going to let everybody know and I'm going to actually probably put like a collage together of everybody that I know that has their nose pierced and That's I'll be a part a of that committee. great idea. But like, why not tomorrow? I think I'm busy tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> Get it I just feel like whatever it is that you want to do, yeah. just do it. Yes. Right? Because like, we Like we talked about, life is too short. For right? granted. Yeah. yeah. So just like, when I decided I want my nose pierced, I you got it went... done that night. Really? Because the place that I went to stayed open until like 1 a.m. Okay, did you get it done in Atlanta? Definitely Miami. Oh, yeah. Right. So then, about <laughs> that. South Florida. <laughs> about that. <laughs> but yeah, I've had it forever. Okay, so you said like five, six years? No, I've had my nose pierced since 2015. Oh. I'm an OG wow. with the nose rings, yeah. So I definitely think I would want a hoop. Yeah. I, I want to kind of bypass all the extra stuff, like the little, you know, the, the trial. Well, I have to pierce it with a stud. Okay. So they're pierced it with like a little small stud until you get used to it. Yeah. And then once you're like past your healing process, then you can like switch them out and get creative. But I oh. love the loop. Like I was wearing the loop when everyone was still kind of like studding it. Studding it. And I was okay. Like, I'm punch, doing a loop. Punchline. <laughs> <laughs> so how long did it take you to have to like to be able to change it to Ooh, the loop? I think I did like 90 days. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. You're getting used really to it. It's really sore. You'd be surprised at how sore your nose is. Oh. Like soon as they poked the hole through, like my tears were just screaming That's down. the second, but you're the second person that yeah. told me. Okay. A lot of nerve endings in the nose. Right. Okay. So, um, how do you like your cocktail? Oh, my cocktail is amazing. You it's like very it? like mellow and yes. like sensual and sexy like me. Oh, so I like, like very, that. Yeah. Yes. Oh, the guru. Yes. <laughs> so tell us a little about you. So oh, the, for so those that fun. don't know, so tell okay. us, tell us a little about you. Okay. About me. So... I am the Vaguru, and mm -hmm. I started that name when I was really getting into the vaginal health and wellness industry, okay. but I started with myself, mm -hmm. so I think everything starts with self, mm -hmm. then you can pour out, yes. right? right? So yes. I needed to do all the reading and research myself, and it was so much information that I was teaching myself just mm -hmm. by reading and just being curious, right. right? I was like, oh my God, I'm going to be like a vagina guru, and then it was just like ah. this light bulb. I was like... Oh my God, the Vaguru. I like that. I loved it. I really, yeah. really like that. Yes. Okay, so tell us a little about this um, pendant that you have on. So a lot of people think this is like a bull. Like they asked me if I'm a Taurus. Taurus. Like somebody asked me if it was an elephant. Never heard that <laughs> one before. But it's actually the female reproductive system. So some people are like, oh, do you have a JJ on you? Is that a vagina? I'm like a... it's the whole reproductive system. Right. So it's the like your thing, vaginal just canal, that. your mm -hmm. uterus, your ovaries, your fallopian tubes. I got the joint. Right? The whole joint. On my here. chest. Yes. I got an S on my chest. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so I really, really like that. So you do, is there a special time that you wear? Do you wear it all the time? Because I wear it. Those that know will know. Yeah, definitely. So I wear it whenever I am sitting in front of a beautiful host oh, such as yourself. You. So I anytime I do that. any interviews, podcasts, when I'm representing a woman's brand, yes. when I'm at events where I'm going to speak about what I do, I'm mm -hmm. wearing this as a representation. Yes. It's also an amazing conversation yes. starter for like... Women and men. Right. Everybody stop and want to know what this is. And when I first purchased it, I was like, oh my God, it's too large because I ordered it. But it needed to be this large because it's I such like a statement. It. Yeah. And you see Please. exactly like when you know, you know. Yeah. I mean, they even have the ridges in like the vaginal canal. Yeah. <laughs> so I like detailed. that. Yeah, that that is such so. a great, I think that's such a great idea. Yeah. And, and it represents what you represent it to does. a certain degree. Yeah. Okay. So, so you walk around with a... Uh, what reproductive system on my neck. Uh, you said a reproductive system. <laughs> yes. I was finna say a vagina. I think we know that. <laughs> the vagina, see, that's the thing. A lot of people think that the vagina is like the entire unit. Yeah, no, it's you know? just a piece it's of it. It's just a portion it's the bottom of the of unit. It. It's yeah. the bottom of it. Yeah, it's the mouth of the uterus. Oh, that's a good, I'll, I'm going to use that as a sound. A sound. The mouth <laughs> of the uterus. Yes. <laughs> 
So what do you think is the most delicate part of the reproduction system? The most delicate part? Oh. Mm, I would probably say the fallopian tubes. Oh. I probably would say the fallopian yeah? tubes. Because once those are damaged and kind of like ruptured and compromised, you're pretty much left with just one or neither one of them. You yeah. Know? So... Yeah, and I don't think there's a way to kind of replace those. So yeah, I would say the fallopian tubes. Well, are there's just there's gentle. there's not a place. To, there's not a way you can replace a clitoris either. The clitoris, but you know there are women that don't have their clitoris and they still enjoy sex. Okay, we're gonna get into that real yeah. quick. <laughs> yeah. So. I almost dropped my drink. <laughs> okay, you know what? Tell us about that. Well, in certain tribes and cultures, oh, you know, young girls yeah. get their clitorises removed, removed and so yeah. they don't have it. And so, you know, the clitoris is not just the portion that's on the outside that you can actually visually see and touch. The clitoris is behind it. This right. whole situation, yeah. a lot of nerve endings. So, you know, they can still get stimulation from that, but like the outside of the clitoris, like it's been, you know, cut off. Right. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I, I've heard of that. Um, yeah, it's maybe really in, barbaric and uh, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to say, is it? Is what part of the who does that? I African, can't remember Africa. Yeah, okay. Africa for sure. Yeah, I was gonna say like yeah. um, it's like female circumcision. Mm-hmm. So that's very interesting. So are you in the medical industry? Is that what kind of like helped you, you know, dive headfirst into it? Yeah, I think so. So currently, I work in cosmetic sales. Yes. So that's medical industry because I do work with you know surgeons and nurses for right. sure. So yes, I was a medic in the Air Force actually. Okay, that's a really so, nice fact. Yeah, that's a thank fun you for fact your about me. thank you for your service. Thanks. Yes, I'm a veteran. I love so that. So I do have some experience there. I'm also an esthetician and massage therapist. So of course, I have to learn anatomy and physiology. Yes. You know, taking oh, that's very interesting. Too. So what do you think about people that? Um, <laughs> get very uh, turned on when they're when they're getting massages. What do you think about that? Oh, I think it's to be expected. It's totally normal. It's common for me. We actually learned that in school. Like there's a chance that people are being so stimulated because of the blood flow, oh. right? And it's very relaxing. And it's also very intimate and sensual. You know, touch, if I touch you like that, it feels it's, good. It's like, right? it, yeah, yeah. that you do so, that thing again. You know, I think that <laughs> as long as you as the professional provider yes. are maintaining your boundaries mm. and ethics, you know, it's it's fine. <laughs> That's very important. <laughs> it's totally fine. The ethics part is yeah. extremely important. Okay, so that's that's interesting. Um, I had something else I wanted to say about that, but I'm going to leave that alone. Save it for later. Uh, so um, let's get into. So wait, I wanted to ask you. So do you have a lot of guys once they find out that you're into this vagal, you're the vag, the vag guru, vag guru, vag guru. <laughs> Um, my cocktail is starting to kick in it's very early, in. and um, <laughs> we started a little bit early. Yes, in we, Carly's defense. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, so when they find out that you're interested in this field, right? Yeah. This is your kind of like your arena. Yes. What type of feedback do you get from men? Do they feel like you're automatically sex, like a sex goddess. kind of like absolutely, and they ah. are. That's accurate. Yes. Yeah. Well, you're giving goddess today. Thank you. I love it. I love it. Isn't she so <laughs> beautiful, you, you guys? Yes. Uh, yeah, they do, or they'll joke and say, "You're not the vaguru. I'm the vaguru." I'm like, "Oh boy, really? God, well, let's talk job. about that." Right. Let's talk about it. Yeah. So, do you think that? Okay, so I had someone on the show last week, and mm -hmm. she was a stud. She identified as a, as a stud, part of the mm -hmm. LGBTQIA community. For sure. And so she said that she believes that women are able to please women better than men are able to please. Do you think that that is a true? Well, in your opinion, do you think that's a true statement? I do, and I've actually gotten into a verbal confrontation with a man over it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it's true. Really? I do. I think that it's true vice versa as well. I agree, and yeah. I said the same thing. Yeah. I said, who can please a woman or you know better than a woman? Yeah. Because you understand the connection. You understand totally. everything, and vice you, versa. You understand everything. Yes. Yeah, so I would say yes. That is <laughs> – sorry, guys. You're just not as good as you thought. You're not amazing. You're just yeah. not better than a woman when she's amazing. Right. At that. Like that's just not a thing. Yeah. So so that's very interesting. So we're going to get into some of this fun stuff. So what is your take on this, right? Cuz I want to understand. I do feel like you're a super guru. Yeah. You just reek it. That's right. Yeah. Right. And so um so what is your take? I had somebody from the show just kind of give me a question and I wanted to pitch it to you. I eat healthy and I'm celibate, but my JJ is still has a foul fragrance. Okay, well, there's a couple of things that could be going on there. So the celibacy, that's great because we yeah. all know that we can, you know, get our pHs compromised. Real quick. Sexual activity, you know, 
from a male or female, whatever, like just any type of sexual activity, even right. masturbating, you could get your pH thrown off. You don't clean your toys. We got bacteria, but, right? I got a story about that. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that when people say, well, I eat well, mm -hmm. I'm not having sex. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. That lets me know that you need a complete reset. Yes. I would agree. Right? Yeah. So it's, it's deep cleansing of your gut. Yes. You know, which is directly correlated to your vaginal health and microbiome. Right. So if you're not having sex anymore, great. Love that for you. Okay. You need to take a breather sometimes. Right. And products too. Because some people try to oh. overly mask the fragrance or the odor because they're uncomfortable well, yeah, instead of okay. getting to the root cause. So you're just putting stuff on top, on top, on top, and you're never getting to the problem. So you have to start over from dust. Yeah. Like start from scratch. So the gut health. Yeah. So maybe like a cleanse. Absolutely. Definitely probiotics. I am. So I don't even like to com confuse people okay. and automatically do a probiotic. It's too confusing. Okay. So I just say you need to cut down what you're eating okay. to almost nothing. Oh. I mean, I believe in water fasting. I mean, I'm extreme about it. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. But what I do say is you need to reset your gut because what's happening is mm -hmm. you might be eating healthy now, but there are still parasites yeah. in there that are asking for, for that sugar, cheese, for and the that cheese, sugar. yeah. The and you're you're gonna do it. You think you're eating well, but you're not eating as clean as I am, right? Or as clean as I would help you, right? Right. So you just have to start all over. So that's very interesting. So I'm an advocate for probiotics. I'm really big on like parasite cleanse. Like there's a para cleanse that I'll do maybe like every like 90 days. Yeah. And so <laughs> I think that that's very important. Water. I think a lot of women don't realize how important water is. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more important than Hennessy, okay? And hookah. Yeah. Okay? I wanted to uh, wait until later, but I'm going to just go there now. Yeah. So alcohol really does, I think it does a, a number on our VJJ. It does a number on our VJJ for sure. And also during our menstrual cycles because mm. it's very stressful for the liver. And your liver supports your menstrual cycle. Right. And so when your liver's weak, now you're not, you know, bleeding as much as you should be. Right. So now the next month you've got like clots. Oh. You've got like brown blood and you've got oh. like severe cramps because you didn't flow all the way. Right. So it's all systemic. You know, you mm. have to be supporting everything. I think that what I do that other people don't do, which is why I'm the Vagu, is I teach you about all of the parts of your body and right. all of the organs and how they affect your vaginal health. Okay. You can't just address vaginal health. Right. You're going to be spinning in circles. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I, I totally agree with that. Um, I definitely think that uh, I want to kind of go back on the alcohol type yes, deal. definitely. I definitely, uh, I think alcohol is great. Obviously, I'm cocktails yeah. with Carly. I, yeah, I encourage sure. cocktailing. But I also am an advocate for eating fresh and clean and yeah. all that fun stuff. I just like a lot of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is sometimes the problem. Yeah. But I do believe that certain liquors probably um, affect the vagina a little different. So would you would you, would you you think that Hennessy has a different effect than maybe like vodka or, you know, what, what is, what's your take on that? Sure. I think that, you know, whatever you're, whenever you're dealing with anything you're putting in your body, body that's sugar. Yeah. Or turning Hello. to sugar. Yeah. You know, Houston, we have a problem. Okay. Your <laughs> yes. vagina's like, yo, like this is a lot for me. Well, bacteria so, likes sugar. Absolutely. And it, and it creates a whole Christmas tree in it your does. vagina. Okay. It does. Yeah. And that's where odors decide they want to come and reside in the yeah. bacteria. So there's good bacteria and there's bad bacteria. Yeah. And so it's important, like when you're flushing your body out. Oh, so wait, when you're flushing your body out, you're putting the good bacteria in and taking the bad bacteria out. So let's talk about douching. Okay. Do you think that douching is a good idea? Yes, if you know what you're doing. Okay, elaborate. Yeah. Uh, I call it a like vaginal canal rinse. I'm fancy with everything. <laughs> so I don't call it douche. I don't like that word douche. Okay. Douche. Yeah. Vaginal canal rinse. And I think it's necessary sometimes if you know what you're doing. And I make my own. So I don't okay. purchase them. Summer's I make either. my own. I, I need my own water, you know, that I'm using. I, I strain my own herbs. I use okay. my own bulb. You know, okay. I ordered it on Amazon, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I make my own and I know what's in it. Right? Yes. And I think that for one, if you have semen in your vaginal canal, you're not trying to conceive, you need to rinse it out. Immediately. I, you, I feel like you need to rinse it out. It's going to smell. It's going to throw your pH off. It's, they're going to die. It smells. Ugh. Right. It just does. So I feel like you need to rinse that part Yeah. Out. That was, that was, that was a lot of two things I wanted to talk <laughs> a about. A lot of two things. <laughs> so... 
Yes, I do. Okay, so with the um, vaginal refreshment, is that what was the term? Oh, vaginal canal rinse. Vaginal canal rinse. So yeah. I, th I do agree that I think that's great. Um, I personally don't do the vaginal canal rinse, but mm -hmm. what I will do is a hip bath. Okay. And so I enjoy that because it's all, all the herbs and maybe it just has a different like scenery for me and it, yeah. it attracts something different yeah, in my mentals. For sure. But I do enjoy that. And then a good old cleaning and squishing it out in the shower. <laughs> with what? Um, with my muscles. Oh, I see. Well, how do you get the water up there? So I have a, like a stall, like a walk-in shower. Okay. And so you just literally bend over and you open yourself up. Oh, I see. And then you get as much water as you possibly can because yeah. there's a way that you can suction yourself. For sure. And then you push it out. So it's almost like what it's we would consider a queeping, canal so to speak. Rinse. It's a vaginal canal rinse. You're just right. doing it differently. Just if, if you're putting just water, with water in there and like expelling and it, you're rinsing it, it yes. out. Yes. Same thing. And so um, that's great, but there was something else that you mentioned um, the semen and the vagina. Yeah. Ladies. It's gross. <laughs> <laughs> all right, ladies, listen. Okay, um, you can't be letting everybody run all up in you, okay? I'm just going to just say it straight. You just cannot. Protected sex is like the best sex, and it, you have to understand that if somebody's going into your vagina unprotected and they're giving you their bodily fluids, mm -hmm. you're also contracting whatever bacteria that they are giving you. Yeah. So if they don't have a clean diet, now that's going into your vagina that's struggling to keep itself clean, okay? Yeah. Um, what do you think about that? <laughs> The unprotected, the uh, semen that kind of stays in there for a while. Do you it's know how super, long super it stays stuck. in? Yeah, about 72 hours. So yeah. you can do the vaginal cleanse, but it's all the way up there. Yeah, but at least it's not in your canal. Like it went up to your fallopian tubes, right? And it just That's hung out. Right, and then, but as far as, you want to hear a story really yes. quickly? So I've been a, a waxer, Brazilian waxing, for many years. Okay. And I actually had a client come in, and I pulled the strip and she clenched her muscles and like semen came out and it was like a deathly odor. I would have quit then. That's it. We're done. Close <laughs> like, this down. Turn the lights off. But I'm like, wow, <laughs> this is okay. So there's What that. was your response? You had to I'm of course keep it professional. professional. It was like, I just kept working. Oh good. You're yeah, one of those people that see working. it and you're just like, I'm going to just yeah, keep waxing. I, just, I took a paper. a paper towel, wiped it down and like kind of pushed it to the end of the table. Oh, and you're so much better than me. Just kept going. I'm queasy. I would have been like. That so she wouldn't know? Yeah. And also I didn't want to work with it. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. It's definitely not something I want to work in the, yeah, in the company I've of. I've seen, smelled, witnessed a lot of things down there, which is why it sparked the idea that there's something that I want to do to help because it's, it was so common the occurrence of everything, what I was seeing, you know, with so many women, I'm like, this can't be a choice. This has to be about, you know, yeah. lack of information. You know what? Yeah. I'm glad you said that because I'll, I'll jump into another question that I had that's similar. So um, a male asked, is, is no odor normal for a woman? It's not common, but I prefer it. No odor? Yeah. Yeah, me too. I prefer it for myself. Yeah. I'm always ready to drop trial. Like, yes. test it out. Okay. <laughs> you want... Let, let me stop. You know what okay. I mean? But yes. I think that it's, there's like a misconception that vagina is supposed to smell like fish. That's not true. If it smells like fish, we're talking about a bacterial infection at 100%. I don't care if it's a little bit fishy. You've got a bacterial infection. End of story. Okay. So when a guy says he likes it to have a certain fragrance. Character. I've heard character. What if it's a little funky? It's oh, a little no. funk on that thing. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. pheromone. It's not pheromones if it's funky. Okay, it is. If you're attracted to the smell, it's pheromones. That's because that's you can like smell saying, something yeah. on Carly that I can't because of our genders. Got you. That's also a fact. That's, yeah. yeah. So do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know exactly. But what if you mean. it's like smells like onions, your underarms, anything like food related, if it smells like any of those things, you may need some antibiotics. Or no, I'm not a. Let me ask no. you something. Do you no think, antibiotics. Do you no do you antibiotics. think that um do you think men, um once they're um, sexually active with a person a lot on the regular that they start smelling like them? At a hundred percent, I yeah. agree with that. At a hundred percent, and I hate because yeah, I've I've <laughs> noticed that though. Like it's real. once I'm in a relationship with somebody, like you're like I smell like, I smell like her. Like, like, yeah, yeah. 
Well, you're interchanging energy. You know yeah. yeah, it could be in my mustache cells, too, though. You know what I'm DNA, saying from everything. from earlier. Like, no, it's very the skin is very absorbent. Yeah, so for sure. Gotcha. Yeah, you start to walk like them. You can talk like them. Negative. I've yeah. Well, you'll pick up their habits, and so I've experienced that even in a relationship where I started noticing I was making a certain mannerisms that they were making. Yeah. And I'm just like, well, how did I pick that up? Well, obviously. You're mirroring them. It's yeah, very, I'm sharing it's their... It's very natural. Yeah, I'm sharing their energy. So, um, okay, so does working out attribute to good vaginal health? Yes, of course. So a woman that's oversized, overweight, may not have an odor or that funky smell. Okay. Um... But she doesn't work out. You would say that maybe her va- her vagina is not as healthy as someone that works out. So ask me the question again, but in a different way so that I understand it a little better. So a person that is out of shape, do you would you consider that may not work out? Mm-hmm. Would you say that they may be more prone to having vaginal fragrance opposed to a woman that works out? Vaginal. Fi- so when I hear the word fragrance, I think of something pleasant. So odor is something that's not pleasant. Or fragrant. Okay, so you're asking me if someone is larger in size, is it more likely that they're going to have a smell? like a? Sure, we okay. can go with that. I think that it just really depends. I think that typically people that tend to be a little bit more overweight probably don't have the um, most alkaline, cleanest diet, but that's not yeah. always the case. Because right. some people's weight it is attributed to their hormones yes. mm-hmm. and their, you know, DNA. Yeah. And so, and I've waxed many very thin, fit girls and I was like, okay. You can get to it. <laughs> so I think it's just case by case, you know, basis for sure. But anyone at any size that works out, mm-hmm. that is going to be something that's very positively holistic. Yeah. So remember, we're treating the entire body. Right in order to have optimal vaginal health. So what do you think when you have a woman that says, um, I just, all of a sudden I'm just walking in the store and I just gush full of like discharge. Oh. What, and it's it's clear. Yeah. Because I've heard of women in just conversation. Yeah. That happens. What is it? What is that? Mm, it depends on what time of the month it is. Mm. It depends on the time of the month it is. I noticed that like women, we tend to be a bit more like juicy around ovulation yes. time. Right. And so it all, the consistency is going to change, mm-hmm. you know, depending on what phase of your cycle that you're in. Yeah. But some women are just juicier than others. Yeah. That, then yeah. there's that. There's so that. what do you think <laughs> about uh, squirting? So we talked about this a little bit before. And so <laughs> do you think that every woman can squirt? <sighs> no. I don't. I can't. I, I don't know how to do I that. I think that every woman can squirt. Yeah. So what, tell us about this whole squirting BS, BS, uh, um, fiesta, so to speak. So once I have a girlfriend Mm -hmm. and she'll, she opened up to me and she says, I'm a massive squirter. Yeah. And she said, (laughs) I literally soak sheets. Yeah. And so what is it? What is it to begin with? Let's talk about what it is. So what is it not? And what is it? It's not pee. I knew it. It's so annoying. It's not not pee. pee. It's not pee. It does have uric acid in it though. Mm -hmm. Like, so there's, it has like, urea in it okay but what happens is like just during the course of you know weeks to months or whatever you're going to accumulate right sexual fluid around your sexual organs it mm-hmm. just accumulates mm-hmm. so whenever you're having sex and or masturbating however you do your thing yeah and you have an orgasm those fluids are released through the urethra right yeah so why the, but so let's go back to the squirting. So mm-hmm. why are some women able to do it and some are not? I think some are afraid of the sensation. I think a lot of women think it's pee. I think some women are so disconnected from their bodies and their vaginas that they don't even know right. how to squirt. I think that, you know, when it comes to the body, yeah, maybe all women have the capability, right. but not the ability. So when you say the ability, because I can't, and I've tried, and I don't know if you have to um, push on something or if you have to, like, I've literally tried, and I'm just yeah. like, I don't really understand how to do this. Yeah. So well, how do you do tried? it? So I've tried to push on, like, my pelvis, kind of okay. like, or, you know, my, my, my vaginal canal, just kind of push. So in and up? Yeah. Okay. I mean, well, I, don't know, dude, I don't insert. I don't insert. Well, you like got to insert. Sound like you tried to pee on somebody. And... Like in order, <laughs> in order for you to squirt, you need to get inside the vaginal canal. Ah. Yeah. Because you're not necessarily stimulating the vaginal canal. Uh-huh. You're stimulating the clitoris from the inside. Okay. 
Okay, yeah. that makes a lot of sense then. Everyone thinks the clitoris is just a little, little like um, man with the boat hat or whatever people call the thing. <laughs> no, like, like get in the vaginal canal and stimulate it from inside. Okay. It takes practice, okay. for sure. It, I think that, you know, having an intimate moment with yourself where you're mm -hmm. completely relaxed, mm -hmm. no inhibitions, no mm -hmm. judgment at all, mm -hmm. and you're really just exploring. I think that a lot of people with vaginas require or depend on someone else to figure out their body and what mm -hmm. makes them come and what makes them feel good. Your orgasm is your responsibility. That is very true. Yeah. I remember when I went through um, a separation with my ex-husband and my I went to my gynecologist. Mm -hmm. And she said, so what's going on in your life? And so I told her about everything. And she goes, okay, so I know you were married, so I know you're probably going to get back out here and you're going to eventually. So she said, I want you to know your body through in and throughout. Yeah. And so she says, I want you to go and get a vibrator. Mm -hmm. And so I was young when we got married. And so I didn't know certain things. I mean, obviously, I you just certain people know I was a late bloomer. And so I went out and I got a vibrator, and I was just like, what am I supposed to do with this? So I tried it out. I was addicted. I was on my lunch break coming home. I was like, what is this? This is amazing. Yeah. So she did tell me. She says, in order for you to know how someone else should please you, mm -hmm. you should know how to please yourself. Yeah. So I truly, I will pass that on to you ladies that, that may be watching. That if you, you have to know your body through and throughout. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about this. So do you think a lot of women are neglecting their vaginal health and focusing more on their exterior yes. image? Yeah. I, mean, I would agree. A hundred percent. I think people are more concerned about lip fillers and BBLs and this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. And um, I think they are, you know, um, sacrificing their, their interior for their exterior. Yeah. So let's talk about the juices and the oils that everybody's putting in their bodies. Okay. So what do you think about all these different juices and oils and aloe vera infused pineapples that people are putting, these ladies are putting in their vagina to make it smell good, mm -hmm. to make it juicier, mm -hmm. um, to make men last long, all that. What do you think about that? Uh, I think it's ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I think it's ignorant. I think it's gimmicky, and I think that it is very um, short-lived as well. Yeah. You know, I am all about solving the problem. What if they don't feel like they have a problem? They just want to make their vagina taste like watermelon. If they want to make their vagina taste like watermelon, then they think that it has a bad taste. Ooh. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I've never been worried about my vagina tasting specific to any type yeah, of food. Yeah, me neither. I think that's weird. Yeah, like I'm not about like that. I've known. I remember girls used to put like Kool Aid down there. Wow. They yeah. Didn't oh burn. yeah. That's insane. No, they would put no, Kool Aid. No, they're insecure. It's yeah. insecurity, very much so. I think it's a ploy to to kind of make men want or lure men. So if your vagina tastes like, you know, if your vagina tastes like pineapples and mine just tastes like regular vagina, he's going to want to come back to you and taste the watermelon. I think that's the thought process. If there's anything that's allowing your body to taste like a fruit or vegetable, first of all, you're risking a bacterial infection. <laughs> You're risking in a bad way. <laughs> you're you're risking BV. Okay, oh from yeah. Out the pH. And if it's anything artificially fragranced, which yeah. a lot of those things are flavored, you're introducing a, a, a bigger problem, issues later yeah. on. So if you want it to taste sweet and have a like pleasant odor and be like dripping wet, <laughs> then cut out meat, right, and sugar and mm -hmm. processed foods and all these things. You've heard this before. Mm -hmm. Clean up your diet. Stay hydrated, like yep. you said. But eat a lot of fruits that yes. are citrus. Yes. My favorite one, this is a trick, I eat this a lot, is passion fruit. Oh. I eat a ton of passion fruit. Okay. It's very sour, mm -hmm. but it makes the vagina sweet when mm. you eat it. What do you think about pineapples? I think that pineapple works better for men, to be honest with mm. you, because the sweetness of the pineapple actually sweetens the glucose in seminal fluid. Okay. So it makes like the cum taste ah. sweeter. Too much pineapple for a woman is actually not a great it's, thing. It's very acidic. Yeah, it's just not a, it's not a great yeah. thing. Especially for pregnant women, it's not mm. a great thing. So... Pineapple juice is, is fine, but if you really want to sweeten it, anything cold pressed, okay, you know, cold pressed cranberry juice, cold pressed grape juice, organic, yeah. like the bitter cranberry juice. Yes, the real cranberry. The real cranberry juice. Yeah, not ocean spray, yeah. any of that. Just, and I, I do a <laughs> vagina smoothie. I put it on my Instagram all the time where I'll just blend all of my fresh 
fruits together okay. and I don't do any additives. It's just oh. the fruit and water. And just don't eat for the whole day and just drink smoothies all day. Yeah. You will smell sweet. You will naturally smell sweet. Not Smoothie King. Okay. No. <laughs> Not those smoothies. Yeah, invest in a really good blender mm -hmm. that's going to last you. And... You know, get creative with your different type of exotic fruits yes. and not the ones that are too sweet. Typically the ones that are kind of sour, like in every smoothie that I make, yes. I juice an entire lemon, oh. the whole thing. The entire lemon? The whole lemon. Oh, wow. Yeah. I've got to sure. taste one of these smoothies. They're so good. Ah. <laughs> They're really good. I will eat anything as long as it's healthy. Like if it's something that's incredibly, I don't eat meat. I went vegan okay. a couple years ago. Well years ago and then I transitioned into some fish but I don't do meat I haven't had meat in like eight years and so I can tell the difference I can either gain weight really quick or I can lose weight really quick because I like sweets okay I'm a cocktail -y. I like tiramisu okay. and bananas fan bay okay yeah <laughs> And trust leches. And you can do that. So if that's your week, mm -hmm. your next week needs to be none of that. None of that. And what I just named. Yes. I'm so going to try this you smoothie. You can do back and forth. Like, I'm not asking anybody to be miserable in this journey. But right. it really is so liberating. And so it gives me so much confidence to know that yeah. my vagina is always on point. So um, not necessarily the vagina, but close to it. Um, let's talk about the back door a little bit. What's the back door? Not the front door. Like the, the vagina anus? would be the front door and the anus would be the back door. All right, the anus. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about it. So um, what do you think about from a, from a sexual standpoint, mm -hmm. people exploring that area from an oral standpoint? Do you think it's healthy? Do you think it's... To it's not salads? clean. Do you, yeah. Do you think it's dirty? Do you think it's something? <laughs> I mean, let's talk about it. <laughs> oh, man. I think that you should not toss anybody's yeah. salad. <laughs> I think you need to be very, like, intentional and specific about whose you toss. I think that you should do whatever turns you on. I think that all of the body, you know, can be fun and intimate, pleasurable. You know, we've got nerve endings everywhere. Everybody's yeah. into their different things. I don't do it. I won't ever do it. But you may want to I'm, look at that I'm not. I won't ever do it. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that I'm not open to being a recipient. You know, because, I'm a recipient. Yeah, so I'm fine with that. Yeah, I, I'm not interested in and in putting. I I have way too much oral health. Yeah, I can't put my mouth there. I'm not gonna do it. But I think that you need to choose which ones, which one, because I'm not with the back and forth between anus and vagina. Okay. And that's with so. sex, too. Like, we're not going to do the back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, that Pick. is getting ready to be an Pick infection. One. Yes. And so you did mention something earlier about I don't like antibiotics. So yeah. if somebody were to get the back door, back and forth treatment and go ahead and get that good old infection, because you will. Yeah. Um, because it is cross-contamination, whether you go take a shower or not. Um, we ooze out of our ears, nose, eyes, and everywhere else below our waist. Truffle, yeah. truffle butter. <laughs> <laughs> so nasty. <laughs> I just had a thought because I actually had truffle raviolis the other night. So that mm. just kind of like made me just remember. Thank you, Trav. <laughs> so wonderful of you. Um, yeah, no, I'm not what into... you, So what do you think about um, entering the back door? Since she, she mentioned tops of salads. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about entering the back door? Is that a healthy way of intercourse? That's or should question. people stay away from that? Hmm. So I always just use myself. Of course. You know, every anybody can do whatever they want to do. For me, it's not for me because yeah. I do have a medical background and I have been in ORs where somebody was getting stitched up in their anus. So, oh. and then, you know, we have the risk of an infection back there, hemorrhoids, so on and so forth, you know, tearing your sphincter permanently. Mm. I, I like mine's just the way it is. So I don't want to compromise it. Mm -hmm. However, comma, there are ways to do it safely right. to where you can enjoy it. Mm -hmm. uh, there are there are women that I have been, you know, having conversations with and they're like, hey, it feels amazing. I have so many orgasms more than my vagina. Yeah, Great. I heard that. Mm. Just be mindful that it doesn't do what the vagina does. So There's as far as like the stretching like, back yeah, and forth, electricity. it's not a thing. The sphincter is there specifically to keep things from and going in and from falling out. So just be mindful that like you... You don't get a new sphincter, and so oh, if wow. yours gets, you know, compromised and it's not functioning the way it's supposed to, you may need to get it stitched up. So you can that. get like a, an anus rejuvenation, like a vaginal rejuvenation. Yeah, in the OR. Yeah. 
Oh, For this sure. is a this is a this is an emergency. This is, a bad thing. <laughs> this, is, this is not an opted in. <laughs> it's not for me, but anybody who enjoys it, like I said, keep living. Yeah, do your thing, yeah. Jelly Bean. I'm just yeah, not in that. Not for me. I'm not in that. And so what you're saying is that's an area with... that you can get nipped and tucked and tighten back up. In the OR. If it's too much playback. In the OR. Yeah. In the operating room. Yeah, in the OR. Yeah. You can go and get that tightened on it, back up. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it's the same surgery that you would opt in to getting a vaginal rejuvenation, which is an elected surgery. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it sounds like it's something that will repair. happen, and it, it is a... Yeah, it's a repair, it's, for sure. Yeah, it's Home Depot. Yeah. You get it fixed. again, if you... And some, like, some men like have smaller penises, and it's like not as damaging... That's a factor. Like we're talking about, what's the circumference of the situation? Yeah. So if he's like very girthy and like well endowed, like you might want to like think about it more than once. But if he's like yeah. smaller, I feel like it's for men with small penises. I would say so. That's just like what I. They think. just don't seem like they're much of a threat in any way. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's for them. But if you do oh. decide to engage in like anal sex, yeah. And you're going to be doing vaginal sex and oral sex. Switch out the condom or just like if you're not using one, like wash up in between. I know it might be a little inconvenient, but it's like so worth not getting an infection. Well, there's also a method, not that we're the anus, you know, specialists or gurus over here but <laughs> at all. But you also have to, um, you have to ha- also have to prep yourself in yes. order to have anal sex. Enema, anal enemas to like rinse all of the fecal matter out. It's yeah. like a whole process. It's like this whole process like preparation. Like right. I don't have time for that. Like I just want mine to be automatically wet. Let's go. Let's have our, our trying roses to... and, and, and fruit and music and have great sex. I don't want to have to get up and go, well, wait a minute, let me go do the thing. And then that. like make sure like I haven't eaten in the last eight hours. Yeah, because, because... you can't eat in a certain, and the yeah. Mexican food I heard is a big no, no. Yeah, but it's a great thing if you have like a fetish <laughs> and you're into that, eat Mexican food. <laughs> and, and go ahead to the back door. If you're into that. Yeah, that's that's definitely not. But, but to each his own. If you guys want it to do it, like that's totally up to you. Yeah. And it, that doesn't apply necessarily to everybody because I'm sure there's tons of people out here that have been, you know, backdooring it for a very long time and they're just like, I hold it in quite well. Yeah. You know, so, you know, different folks for different strokes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Did you want to say something about that, Trav? Uh, not about that, but I do have a question that I'm trying to word correctly in my brain right oh, now. And we okay. did talk about this earlier, Carly. Okay. Um, so since you're the vag expert, yes. Um, what is too much for a woman as far as sex? Ooh. Like, what is what is is should there be a um matter of fact, like um, a monthly limit or an annual limit? I mean, it's one different man a month, too much. For your vagina. So are we asking about frequency or like the variety, like the, the numbers? Like Obviously both. I think both. 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 And, then, and then of course with the vaginal the health. Now we're not talking about once a month. We're yeah. just saying should a woman, um, it, um, is it okay for a woman to kind of like just uh, be sexually liberated, I guess? If that's what you want to call more it. More than one. Let's just yeah, put it. Let's, more say, than one 12, let's, break, say, break. let's say 12 a year. 12 different men a year. Okay. A man a month. For 10 years. Okay. That's 120 bodies. Okay. In 10 years. Okay. So do you think that that is, is extreme. too many, too much sex, mm-hmm. too many partners? It, cannot, it, can, it doesn't necessarily have to be the same person. It could be a different man every month. It's okay. a different man every month. That's it's a I'm different man about. every yeah. month. Do you think that that is way too much for the vaginal health? Or do you think that it mm-hmm. just doesn't even matter? Because that's a lot of bodies. Yeah. So let's just say that this... Number 12 is one man a month, one time. So 12 times that year, you know, I would say that it doesn't matter the frequency and the number. What kind of sex are you having? Are you protecting yourself? That's huge. And when it comes to the way that you're having sex, and then when it comes to like post-sex protocols, like how are you taking care of your vagina after sex. Like, what are you doing? What are your rituals? Like, all of these things matter. Yeah. So I think that it just, the vagina is so amazing and it's so magical. So clean, That you can, I have something to say about that, that (laughs) you can have as much sex as your vagina is comfortable with because when she's not comfortable, you're going to know. You're going to know when to stop. You're going to feel some discomfort. You're going to be dry. You're not going to have the desire. Like your body has an amazing way of right. communicating with you, mm-hmm. especially when you're in tune and you're eating well. Right. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, so but I don't believe in body count. I don't like that. I was just about to say, how do you feel so, about the body count conversation? I don't, I don't like it. Mm-hmm. I, I think that it is um, very judgmental, and I think it's very one-sided, mm. and there's a double standard of course. when it comes yep. to it. So I'm not, I'm not into it, and mm-hmm. I, I don't really, I don't like when I hear that. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think that whatever you choose to do is your business. Right. Like you want to say that my body count's too high, but like. You are an alcoholic and you're overweight, right? And you know, <laughs> you're borderline diabetic. Like, what are we? Borderline. What are we <laughs> actually talking about here? Because right. you're damaging your body as well. Mm. So, like, don't. No, nobody wants to have that conversation. It's, with it's me. a okay. So it comes from a judgmental standpoint. Absolutely. Okay. And it also comes from a place of insecurity mm-hmm. from men. And I'm just using men and women because of that is the way that I date. Right. I don't really get into all the other things because I'm not well versed or experienced. Okay. What so, would be the other things? Like I'm heterosexual, so those are the relationships that of I course, talk about. Gotcha. I don't know any, about anything else. Right. right? Of course. So yep. I don't go there. But I just think that you know. It is very judgmental for a man to say that to a woman. And I think that a lot of times it's because they are concerned with, have you been with someone better than me? Ah, I agree with that. And the answer is yes. Absolutely. There's some really good ones out there. So you feel like a man (laughs) should, I mean, I feel like um, it's actually nobody's business what you did in the past. And that too. You know what I'm saying? So, Um, right. so. So to my point, why are you worried about it? Like, what are you comparing yourself to? I think that what's me. happening is that when a person asks your, for your body count, which I think is a very trivial question. It's rude, too. I think it is. It's very intrusive. I think that they are definitely wanting to sum you up and judge you in some sort of capacity. Because if you have had, if you say, okay, well, yeah, I've had you know, 40 different partners in the last year. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're a hoe. Totally. That's you a know? lot. That's a lot. I'm a man. That's a lot. You, that's a lot of it's penises. It's anybody. I mean, it's it is a lot. Anybody. So you done had 30 lot. niggas on your forehead. I mean, forty. You said forty. I, mean, I said 30. Or I've in the never car, had or... a penis on my forehead. No. I mean, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying something. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just putting something out there. I don't know what kind of sex y'all are having, but, uh, I, I don't know, I don't know why men think, I want to see if we can wrap around your head. Why you guys think <laughs> that the penis doesn't get worn out as well and experience atrophy and stop working and not producing the erection that it used to. Oh, let's talk about the it. blood flow. Like, penises get worn out too. So know that. Okay, camera <laughs> okay. time. Let's talk know about that. these men and their penises. So and when how. he says this has true. never happened before, mm-hmm. he's having too much sex. Okay. Yeah. So I know of a man, um, and he is very much, I feel like he's addicted to sex. He likes to have sex all the time. Mm-hmm. I know that he masturbates all the time. Um, he's about 50 at this point. Mm-hmm. Good 50 looking guy. 50 year old good looking guy. Yeah. At what point is that little dick is going to stop working? Because it's going to stop working. I have no idea because I don't know how he takes care of himself. It could keep going well, on he, and on Let's and just on. say he eats meat. Does he eat meat? I mean, I don't really, there's no time. It just depends. I feel like. It depends on his cholesterol, you know, his blood pressure, like all yeah. of these things, his circulation. So I feel like, and you tell me what you think about this. This is a little girl talk situation here. Okay, so do that. you feel like <laughs> men that are so incredibly do you feel like men are incredibly sexual in their in their peak, the peak of their life? In their twenties, or even in their forties? Okay, because in their in their before they get to like forty seven ish, and when they get to their late forties, they're ready to settle down, or their fifties, they're ready to settle down because that dick just don't work exactly. like it used to. Accurate, Bren, you think so too? I do. Accurate. Why do men do this, Trav? You got you the only man in here. Why do men give away their body count? Okay, just max it all the way out like a AMX you'll never get the freaking, you know, bill for. And then <laughs> you want to eventually decide, you know what? I want to have something when my dick don't work no more. I'm going to tell you why. Get because that dick body. men think that they're always, <laughs> we think that we're always going to be healthy and they, that we will always be able to get to that erection. Because a lot of that is based on our health. Because you could be yeah. 80 years old and still get that moment standing up. You feel me? Yeah. If... You know, you've taken care of your body, right. but, you know, drinking the Hennessy, the Casamigos, mm-hmm. smoking the blunts, mm-hmm. not working out. You yeah, know what I'm I would saying? agree. We yeah. got a little mid say I got a little mid say but I still work. You yeah. feel me? But, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think that plays it. a major part in all that, and we don't expect that to happen. That's yeah. kind of like, I mean, I we don't expect to pass away at an early age. This is true. At 40 some years old, you don't, you don't expect to die, but it happens. You know what I'm saying? Do you feel like if a man, and this is this is this is very loose, okay? This is we're gonna say this is alcohol talk. But <laughs> all of it is. So do you feel like if a man can't can't produce in the bedroom because he's been a hoe all Perform. of his life? 
pr produce perform what? and produce pr perform sex okay 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 do you feel like he should compensate in other ways of course in what way friend in any way that i need you to okay yeah there you have it you're so gonna leave him alone yeah i mean but so <laughs> if a man <laughs> look man if that hey, yeah, like, ain't working you ain't gonna like bread like that no more that's not true I it, don't believe it's that. Not, it's not true for me anyway. I, okay. I always speak for yeah. myself. I don't necessarily believe that's true. I'm on both sides of the fence with it. Okay. If because if you're a person... thunder dust in your ass, you're going to leave, bro. You've been waiting to use that all since <laughs> Joe's been... <laughs> <laughs> but if that's all you're doing, I'm not going to like you either. But I'm right. just saying, though, if I'm, what I'm saying is if 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 whoever you, you're dealing with, mm -hmm. if he's not satisfying you sexually uh -huh. with his penis, with the dick, then you might... You might talk I, I, would, deuces, I, would, I don't man. agree with that. Not for me, because there's so many ways to please. Because he's just me sucking sexually. on your vagina all like no, but there's all so, night. I, and I think that that's where I'm gonna take a risk here. He talks okay. salad. That I 100% date outside of my race. Okay. And I think that in my personal experience, that's the way black men think. Oh, I I mean, I'm open yeah. to this. That I can agree I'm with that because I'm a black man, so I don't know how other right. uh, races of men would right. think. So, so black men think that. that if you're not yeah. pleasing her with the penis, because this is this means everything. Yeah. That you're not, that's not true. I'm gonna give you this and meat. And what because of that notion in the mind of black men that I've experienced, mm. that's all you're trying to please me with. So I'm dissatisfied in other areas. Okay. Yeah. I mm. I, I can I respect yeah. that. Yeah. So experience. I'm She's sorry. It's the, we're, the drinking. Drinking. we're drinking and it's the pineapple juice that's right. just getting yes, all we're in my get pineapple yeah. juice, obviously. Right? A lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting all citrusy and stuff. <laughs> so, dating outside of your race. So, it is something that I did when I was younger, not consistently mm -hmm. because of the resources. It wasn't a lot of us. But in my adult life, I have not dated outside my race. I personally, and I'll, and I'll tell you, me personally, I love black men. I love melanated men. I just have this affinity for a, a man, a black right. man. However, as the dating has progressed, okay, and mm -hmm. the lack thereof, and when you are able to live kind of like an alternative, like there's alternative things that you like, like yeah. hiking or, yeah. you know, I want to go to a winery and, yeah. and all that, you know, and, and so on and so forth. And that's just the beginning like that. It gets even more in depth, like yeah. museums and drive out to play certain places to go to certain museums exactly. and tour plantations. And I have not met, I, I have met a, a black man that was well versed in that, but it's a certain type of class of black man that's not always readily available. Mm -hmm. So now I feel like I need to probably explore dating outside my race because I do want that alternative experience that mm -hmm. I don't get to see all the time. Mm -hmm. For us in Atlanta, and we're digging a little deep, and I may be a little judgmental, and hey, it is what it is, it's my experience. I feel like all of the, the only type of time we can meet like, an, like a black man is at one of the bar vegan or out at, you know, pen and proper or out there. Like, where do y'all go? Where's the regular shit you guys go to that is, I'm ranting, that is normal. That's not a turn up. That's, yeah. you know, that's kind of like alternative. <laughs> Where y'all at? I'm laughing because my beautiful bestie Nicole always says there are no men, and it's so funny Ugh. because it's kind of true and sad, but it's also like comical. It's it like, is. It's like how where, do we get where here? Are, where? Right. It's like there are, none. and then or and they're funny. already taken. Well, yeah, and they don't care about that either. So, well, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> it's so, tough it's, it's it is tough. it's very tough and it's kind of like what happens to the black woman that doesn't want to go to the turn up to meet guys Date outside your race where do you go like what do you where do you go north atlanta so alpha <laughs> you got to go to alpharetta you got go to go to john's creek and um mm. what is that swaney so swaney swaney yeah but i think for me because i don't go looking right I am open to that. So right. if you decide in your mind, okay, like now I'm open, you'll start seeing it. So it's kind of like when you get a new car and you start seeing your car everywhere. Oh my God. Yeah. Like I know exactly what you mean. It's not that it wasn't always that way, but, but now you're noticing it because it's in your mind. Yeah. Now. So 
For me, I know that I'm open to dating outside of my race. So my thoughts when I think of men are men of all races and backgrounds and cultures. Okay, so you've so opened they, it up for oh, yourself yeah, The floodgates are open. They, like, come for me more than black men, actually. Really? More men outside of my race come for me. Interesting. Yeah. That is very interesting. Um, I tried the online dating thing, right? And I get a lot, of, a lot of Caucasian men yeah. that want to talk to me. You but... are very exotic looking. Oh, I think you And can. that's what the feedback has been. Because I asked them. Oh. I'd be like, so you dated a black woman before? Do you have a fetish? Is this an experiment? Am Do I getting want... ready to be your yeah, chocolate fantasy? Right. And they're like, I typically don't, but you look exotic to me. Like, they like a little oh. bit of flair and a little bit of a difference. And they okay. also, and again, this is my experience and what I've, heard from white men just getting the feedback they like black women that are darker yeah i've yeah. i've seen that like kind of like the biracial thing is not yeah. there it's not what you see typically yeah, they you're like, right they like the deep tones mm, it's they like the hues yeah though. and it's just like when our black men like the lighter tones and the outside of the black race like something that's different yeah. it, you're more curious about it and you know for whatever reason you seem to be more attracted to it that's fine huh. that's very interesting I, I want a man that wants me so i don't I'm not, I feel I'm like not sometimes doing the race loyal thing. Okay, yeah. so so, uh, you know that is something I'll have to overcome, because I you know and it's not like it's such a huge big big deal, but it's like in the climate of like the the, the Trump world and those type of people, you know, and you know what I mean when I say those type of people, sure. not white people, but those type of that type of demeanor, you know, um, those are the things that I look at when I when I sometimes see you know, a white man interested in me. Mm -hmm. My thought process is, am I a black woman that you, are you really interested in me? Am mm -hmm. I a fantasy? Mm -hmm. Or are you just trying to get a cultural experience? Mm -hmm. Like, what is this? Are you really just trying to like bait me in mm -hmm. to like do something to me? Mm -hmm. Am I like, yeah. there's a lot of different things. Yeah. And of course I'm from Los Angeles. So I've seen the diversity, yeah. but here in the South, it's a little different. Okay. So that so that's 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 my mindset. That's kind of how I feel about it. It's not closed minded because I'm interested. I just have to be in those arenas and in that space. Yeah. When I go see my clients, they're like, "Hi." Yeah. And I'm like, "Excuse me." Like it's <laughs> this is very I'm supposed to try to be professional. Yeah. But so I do see the interest. Yeah. They do pursue different than black men. Mm -hmm. I feel like in some cases, and we do have black men in here now. Um. I feel like sometimes with black men, we have to convince them. Mm. Like, oh, you know, I'm this amazing woman and I've got all my own stuff and I've got this and I've got that. And they're so concerned about, and, and these are my experiences, okay? Yeah. The splitting, the, 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 the Kevin Samuels and the, the mindset. I, what bothers me the most is the fact that in our culture, we are the least to want to have the white picket fence. And the life of like, I want a beautiful wife that I can build my life with. Well, we've been branded okay. with a title that is detrimental to everything about us, which is strong black, black woman. woman. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not a strong black woman. This is the <laughs> second woman on the show that has said I'm that. Not. Yeah. 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 I'm not a strong black woman. Yeah. Like, I, I want your help and assistance. I want to be able to lean on you. I want you to provide for me. I want you to do the things that you're yeah. best suited to do. And I... We'll do the same. I'm not best suited to sit on the couch and do nothing. Right. So that's not what I'm asking of you. Right. But if you are asking me to take on your name and bore your children and be your wife, you now have a responsibility over me because I have mm -hmm. my father's last name right now. Mm -hmm. So that's the man that takes care of me. So if you're asking for me from him, which right. you should be doing, these are your responsibilities now. I'm your responsibility. Yeah. If you ask me to split it down the middle, I'm going to have a boyfriend <laughs> in our relationship. I agree with that. Yeah. And you can't... You can't judge somebody because of that. You can't pigeonhole somebody. If you want to act like a roommate, oh my god, I'm gonna have a boyfriend. Yeah. Oh, we're roommates. <laughs> Love that for us. Right. I'm gonna do what I want to do. I mean, I actually kind of like how she explained that. Yes, she says, "I, I have say. my father's last name. Yeah. If you're gonna take on this responsibility, then act accordingly." Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. I feel yeah. like, and, and I, and That's I agree actually with that. Dope. I, Thank that's you. Dope. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. But and a lot I, of y'all don't have y'all father's last name. No. Okay, well, I have my don't. father's last name. My father <laughs> I mean, raised me, so. so. You know, but I, I, like I said, I like that. I That's feel like, if you, want, like if you want dope. your significant other to split everything with you, do not ask for her to marry you. Right. Just get your homeboy to split the bill. No, so I'm a, man that, if, I'm a man that doesn't agree with that. 
Okay, that's fine. Yeah, and Carly, I'm a woman that know. says if we're splitting everything, then I can do 100% at my house. And you can do 100% at yours. And we can visit each other. But I'm not going to be doing wifely <laughs> duties. Friends. Okay, so I don't know if you understood. I would agree. It's just not comfortable. I'm not a man that way. agrees with the 50, 50 split. That's it's what embarrassing I as a man. It is um, embarrassing. You should be ashamed. It's also like a power <laughs> dynamic. You know, a man should be the head of his household. Um, I would agree. By any means necessary, he should make sure everybody is comfortable. But I also don't, I also believe that if a man is working 150 hours a week, his woman should be like, nah, you can't do that. I'm going to help you out a little bit. That's what I said. I'm well, not, not going to sit on the couch. Not, that's what I said. I'm not best suited to sit on the couch, so that's not at all what I'm yeah. talking about. There are certain things that you're best suited to do as a man and I'm best suited to do as yes. a woman and that's what the yin and yang Mate, is all yes. about. It doesn't mean 50-50, you do half of this and I do half of that and we're doing half of one thing. Could you imagine no, that No, I'm going to do my thing over here yeah. and you do your thing over here. Right. Okay, because there are just certain things that I'm going to just put a better spin on, finesse it better because I'm a woman. You're a woman and you live in your femininity. Thank you. And I stayed there. Yes, So when I start acting masculine and I don't respect you and I'm resenting you, there's no relationship. We're done here. Because now we're competitors. Yes. We're doing the same thing. Now oh, we're you're, sword fighting. You're my opponent. Yes. So are we splitting? Okay, so I'm going to put one of my legs in the pants and you put your other leg in the pants. And we do a three-legged race. Like, I'm not, <laughs> I, we're not doing that. I need to be able to be rested to pour into you mm -hmm. as my man. I'm going to do everything that I need to do yeah. to make sure that you're taken care of mm -hmm. in the way that only I can take care yes. of you, but I cannot be exhausted. Right. And I think that they have to understand that. Yeah. I think this is a conversation that needs to be not just a 180. It needs to be an entire 360 yeah. conversation mm -hmm. because I think in our community, we have a lot of, I want, I don't want to have to pay for anything in my marriage. And men are like, I'm not paying for everything. We're going 50, 50. And then we get stuck. Yeah. And we cannot get past that. Oh my God, we don't tolerate each other at all. Right. It's it's, it's just like this. Constantly. And yeah. so that was the whole like narrative for my show is that I wanted to create a different percep percep pers perspective mm -hmm. as to how we represent ourselves and how we're representing. Yeah. And we're a lot of different things. We're beautiful. We're submissive. We're amazing. Mm -hmm. We're vulnerable. We are strong. We're powerful. We live in our femininity. Yeah. We're understanding. You know, and those are all those amazing things that get looked over because of the color of our skin. Mm -hmm. And that's con is constantly perpetuated against us mm -hmm. within our community. Yeah. So we have to, it's almost like we need to have a meeting of the minds <laughs> and say, okay, black man, mm -hmm. like, I love you. Yeah. I want to be your woman. Yeah. I want to do be all these amazing things, but I need you to be the head of household. Yeah. And what that means, you need to look it up. It, all that is what you need to be. And then I will be the woman. I will make the house a home. But there aren't enough of us for them out there. So really the problem is with us. We do have the power truly yes. in more ways than one. Mm -hmm. And so we're not speaking into them that way. And we're right. not being that for them right. to let their guard down. We truly right. are each other's opponent. And that's why we have a platform mm -hmm. where we will <laughs> perpetuate this behavior yes. so that they understand that we exist. Yeah. And you can't just go keep going to the club and find them because yeah. we're not at the club. I'm so always at home. <laughs> Me too. I saw something on Instagram, the right? The girls are at home. Guys. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like this, this guy was like, I just want to know, we're all the girls that like to get choked and to be taken care of. And this girl was like, oh, we're at home. We're at home. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yes, understand. But what, so on the flip side of this, for guys that want to meet women like us, they're like, well, where are you guys? I know. They feel the same way. I think that it's all about your thoughts. And manifestation. Manifest it, okay? You'll see me at, I may pop out one night, okay? It's summertime. We may be in Miami. We may be anywhere. And uh, you'll know, but you have to be able to pull back the sheet and actually dissect and get to know someone. Yeah. Stop, black men, my loves, my kings. Stop judging a book by its, by its, by its cover, yeah. okay? So when you see a woman, like, have a conversation with her to see who she really is. Mm -hmm. Don't think just because she has a fat ass, she's wife material. Yeah. Like, because that's where they get stuck. Yeah. I mean, good God, man. They just get stuck right at just stage one. It's like, what about stage two and three? You know, and then when it gets difficult, when you do meet somebody, they want to run. Everybody yeah. wants to run, and oh, women totally. included. Everybody oh, yeah. wants to run. And it's like, no, let's talk it out. Let's no. have a conversation. Yeah. You know, communication is... 
is the foundation to any successful relationship or kinship. Well, that's why there are so many people that are single and lonely because everyone's moving. And with, and with their guards up. Yeah, everyone's moving around. Nobody is slowing down and like yeah. stopping for two seconds. Yeah. You know, and, and also stopping for two seconds to get to know who they are. How can you possibly know what's good for you if you don't oh know who gosh. you are? There's so many unhealed people out here, men and women. Yeah. And if you would just, just start with yoga and stretching and meditations, and they'll teach you how to do it. But it's like start with just being in your, as a matter of fact, start with taking baths. Baths are great. So start with taking a bath, put a clock in for like, you know, take a tap for like 30 minutes. Okay. That's a long ass time because I take like 45 minute baths sometimes. <laughs> but that gives you time to be in your space, in yourself so that you can meditate and really just think about your life. You know, throw a little bit of that, you know, sea salt in there too so you can cleanse yourself. Yeah. But <laughs> you know what? I really like where this is going. Yeah. And I would love for us to do another episode yes. on how to center yourself. Yes. How to find yourself. How to yes. attract not only just people. Because when you are in a good and healthy, positive yes. space, everything comes to you. So you don't have to specifically yes. think about one positive a thing. Attraction you're is attraction. Attraction is attraction. So yes, we absolutely. Should, we, we should, should definitely that. do. Yeah. Yes. Be great. I would love that. And we'll promote that one because that's yes. going to be a good one. Maybe do a it live is. too. Yeah. Okay. I'm down for that. Okay. I like it. <laughs> ah, give me a little bit of <laughs> Yes. So sorry, girl time. Okay? <laughs> but I do like that. But people have to learn to sit in themselves. And a lot of people are not able to sit in themselves. They're uncomfortable. Yes. So guess what? As soon as I make you uncomfortable, you're going to go because you're not even comfortable when you're uncomfortable. Yes. And then you take that energy and yeah. you transfer it to somebody else yeah. that may have triggers and traumas. Yeah. And all of a sudden they're liking you, but then it's kind of like, well, I've got this, this feeling now. I've got this new energy of, of feeling triggered and trauma, trauma, yeah. trauma. Yeah. Or, and they just conti it continues to evolve. Yeah. It, well, so this actually just happened to me last night. So, oh. you know, my, my person that I spend time with, yeah. you know, got into like a bit of like a disagreement with like someone else he's talking to. I'm fine with it. But there was a misunderstanding in, in a text that I sent. So he like cursed at me. Right. Oh, no. And not I was, aggressive. But, not I, aggression. but I had two options in that moment. Right. So I was like, you know what? This has nothing to do with me. Yeah. I'm not going to take it personally. I'm healed enough to recognize what this yes. is. And so I was just like, I didn't mean it like that. Like, right. I have your back. Right. You know, we're good. I want you to be in a better space right. when we see each other. So, you know, long story short, you have the decision based on how you yeah. handle someone else and how you want to be handled, handled because yes. I could have retaliated and said something negative and then it would have just been spiraled. Oh, my God. But what I did say to him is, Turn off that negative energy because you're going to attract more. Right. And that's true. And he's like, you're right. Like negativity like negates more. Yeah. I need to like check myself. Right. So that's what we have to start doing. I love that. Yeah. I, I absolutely love that. Yeah. And I, I think that when you are healed, you healed, you heal others. Yeah. And so, um, I don't think I'm going to have this cocktail anymore because I just feel like tongue, tongue twisted Timmy it's fine. today. <laughs> you know what? And I'm glad that, you know, you and I are both making mistakes and speaking because yeah. that's real. It There's is. No, no There's no perfection. Yeah. We're drinking. Everybody knows what happens when you drink alcohol. Yeah. Like, this is a very real conversation. It's, re it's really weird because it's like my mouth is dry and I'm like, it's, I, so I don't know if it's this. So we're drinking a little bit of Crown Royal tonight, guys. Yeah. Apple. With pineapple. Um, yeah, with pineapple, and it's well, super you know duper that, good. Like alcohol is dehydrating. Yeah, and I'm over here <laughs> like, yeah, I think I need some lip smucker. But um, but yeah, I, I totally understand that, and I am so happy that you came on. Thank you. And I love your energy. I think you are a goddess. Thank you goddess so recognized much. goddess. Oh, we do. We totally do. And I think that what we should do as a culture of women, no matter who you want to date, we should encourage each other. Yes, of course. And so I have this movement that's going, and it's called Change the Narrative, Changing the Narrative. Okay. And it is basically us standing still and essentially pivoting in our community as black women. And, and really showcasing class and how we want to be treated. I'm sorry, I'm sick of the city girl movement. Now, do we dance to it and we enjoy it sometimes? Yeah, who cares, it's entertainment. Yeah. Is it in my life? Yeah. No, Yeah. by a long shot it's not. Yeah. The only time I'm turned into a city girl is behind closed doors, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, my man. So, but, but you know, they're not, that's, it's entertaining, Yeah. right? So at the end of the day, all the city girls in the world 
are worried sick about some guy having right. a stomach ache over some guy crying over some guy wanting to be loved wanting flowers right. wanting roses wanting love we as humans need love yes nobody is immune to that i was <laughs> like, telling somebody you cannot this life is not created for us to live alone no it's not. like to be loved on yeah. and to be caressed and touched the, you know what this is i know we talked about this is but i have to say this i truly believe you cannot live a life with no sex and no sense of touch yeah I, I feel like anybody that can just be completely celibate they're not having sex you are not living your full life yeah. You have to, I believe it's, it's like an emotion yeah. that has to be massaged. Yeah. It's emotional deprivation for sure. Yeah. And it's a disconnection. And I from think yourself. that, yeah. yeah. And then when you don't have, I think when you don't have sex for a long time, what it does is it creates, it's almost like a, a muscle that's not worked out. Well, so I, I did an interview with Sheen Magazine and I talked about how the vagina is like use it or lose it organ. Oh my God. Please yeah. let's talk about that real quick. Yeah. Here. <laughs> because what happens is you, you don't think about it. Yeah. So there's a disconnect there again. Like you're just not thinking about it. So yeah. your brain's like, okay, don't have to worry about doing anything with that. So yeah. I'm going to be focusing on other things. So you know what it is for me? I want a real relationship. I'm not pressed for one. Okay. I'm not pulling and tugging. If it happens, it happens. It's going to happen. What's a real relationship to you? A real relationship with true intention on love and all those things that monogamy? amount up to, yes, okay. monogamy. To so, be clear, because some people will be like, well, I'm in a real relationship, yeah. even though there's three or four of us. Yeah, no, I don't want that. Okay. I'm, I'm just a different <laughs> type of goddess here. <laughs> like, yeah, I channel my Oshun energy and not um, something else. Yeah. But to each his own. If you're okay yeah. and you're comfortable with multiple, you know, what, you know, a family environment, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. Me personally, I'm kind of more on a one-on-one because of the energetic mm -hmm. aspect of it. And then, of course, when you're sharing your energy and when a person's sharing their energy with so many other people, mm -hmm. I'm having sex with you, but then you're having sex with all these other girls and now you're giving me their energy. I don't know what's going on in my life. Like, things are not working the way I'm manifesting because I've got Shaniqua's funky, ener funky energy mm -hmm. and her inconsistent inconsistency. Sorry, Shaniqua's out there. <laughs> hey, Shaniqua, come on the show, girl. <laughs> Love you, girl. So... I, I prefer that also because at times I can be a little territorial. Like if I'm giving and pouring into my man, mm -hmm. I'm I want him to receive it in the in the form of love. Okay. But I have a hard time, and this is me personally. I have a hard time with pouring into someone that's pouring into other cups, and because I feel like they're not truly receiving me a hundred percent. They're only receiving a portion of me because they're just getting, oh, thank you. That's great. All right, we'll put this in my back pocket and go on over here to Shaniqua. Mm. And so then I'm left here like, well, what the fuck? Okay. I want to feel this love and this emotion all the time. And I truly feel, and this is me because mm -hmm. I did date someone before and I was in that space. Mm -hmm. And I've healed from that to know that that is not what I want. And so when I was dating this man and he was involved with other women... I could tell the disconnect. I could tell when he disconnected. Hmm. And so we would be sitting there talking and he'll be checking his phone and, and I'll just be like, and I'll look and I'll, and I can see the gears turning. Like maybe Shanique was saying something different to him that's maybe alluring or he's having a conversation he has to think about when he has to see her. Mm. And I started picking up that energy and I didn't like it. Mm. And I'm like, I'm a fucking goddess. Are you kidding me? And he was the only person I was having sex with. Mm. So I was in its pure form, but he wasn't. So imagine you being in your purest form and pouring into someone and they're not pouring back into you. You feel it. You're so sensitive because you're not sharing your energy with everybody. And so you're easy. You could tell of your sense of smell, taste, touch. Everything is very heightened. Mm -hmm. And so, sorry, y'all. I didn't mean to go a little deep, but. No, I, I th love this conversation. Yes, but we're going to save some more of this for yeah, later. Sure. We're going to, we're for our show, for our next show. Yeah, we'll save it. But, but yeah, I, I, I appreciate you coming on. We could talk about this stuff forever, okay? We really could. Yeah, we were on the phone doing our like intro conversation and we were like, <laughs> okay, okay, girl. Okay, okay, I'm going to go, okay, I'm going to see you in like a week and this yeah. is good. We're going to love this. But it was a total like vibe. And I think you're, like I mentioned before, I think you're gorgeous. Thank I think your you. energy is fantastic. Yeah. I love your confidence as a beautiful black woman. And I think you need to share it with the world and continue to share it. I love words of affirmation. Yes. Love that. Receive it. Yes. So yes. thank you so much, Carly, Aww. for having me. Well, so, well, she knows. The yes, of course. So you can find me at interview. <laughs> interview interview me again. Nougat. It's that. Your... This camera. Okay, yes. perfect. So 
all the social media platforms that I am the Vagu. That's mm-hmm. I am T H E B A G U R U. So what is it? Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. TikTok, YouTube, mm-hmm. everybody. That's where you can find me. And I love to hear back from you guys. So let us know how you like this interview. Yes. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, if you like something I didn't say, you didn't understand, you didn't disagree, mm-hmm. I want to hear from you. So hit me up. I love that. <laughs> and I am Carly, of course. I'm Cocktails with Carly. You can find me on Instagram at Let's Talk Over Cocktails. That's our show page. My personal page is Cocktails with Carly underscore. And the inst I'm sorry, the YouTube page is Let's Talk Over Cocktails with Carly. Uh, this was an amazing show. This was great. I truly appreciate you coming. <laughs> of course. Thank you very much. I'll be back. We, you I will. Feel like we're gonna do like at least two or three more. Yeah, and we're gonna do cocktails and dinner parties <laughs> and everything else. Shout out to our love in the back. Thank you so much for coming, friend. Yeah. And uh, shout out to Trav in the back. Thank you so much for making sure all of our vocals and our visuals are pristine. Mm. Um, we are at the Pratt House, baby, and we will see y'all next week. Bye. Good night.